I'm standing here at the Pont du Gard and I can't help but wonder how on earth did the Romans build this? Imagine constructing a water system so advanced it would challenge modern engineers 2,000 years later. That's exactly what we're looking at. A feat of engineering so precise, so vast and so ahead of its time that it still leaves experts scratching their heads today. Now you might think that getting water from one place to another is simple. Just dig a ditch, right? Well, actually, when you're talking about moving millions of gallons of water every single day across vast distances, over hills and through valleys, it becomes a bit more complicated. The Romans faced a monumental task. How to supply their ever-growing cities with fresh, clean water from distant sources. And that's because Rome wasn't built next to a convenient, clean river. They had to bring water from springs and lakes miles away. But here's the thing, they couldn't use pumps like we do today. They had to rely entirely on gravity. It's a problem that would stump many modern engineers, but the Romans, they cracked it wide open. The Romans didn't just use gravity, they mastered it. They created a system so precisely engineered that water would flow consistently for tens, sometimes hundreds of kilometers, all without a single pump. But how? Well, it's all about the slope. The aqueducts were built with an incredibly gentle gradient, often just one in 4,800. That's a drop of only about 20 centimetres per kilometre. Now you might think, surely that's too shallow. The water would just sit there. But that's the genius of it. This shallow slope meant the water moved slowly enough not to damage the structures, but quickly enough to prevent stagnation. It's a balancing act that required incredible foresight and calculation. Especially when you consider they were working without modern surveying equipment or computers. The level of precision in Roman aqueduct construction is, frankly, astonishing. We're talking about structures built two millennia ago that deviate by mere centimetres over kilometres of distance. To put that in perspective, that's like laying a ruler from New York to Philadelphia and having it be leveled to within the thickness of a coin, it's the kind of accuracy that would be challenging even with modern laser levels and GPS. But the Romans achieved this with tools that by our standards were incredibly basic. They used something called a cora bates, essentially a long wooden frame with a water level built in. Imagine trying to ensure a consistent slope over 50 kilometers using what's basically a glorified spirit level. It's mind-boggling. And yet, they did it time and time again across their vast empire. Now let's talk about what these aqueducts were made of, because this is where things get really interesting. The Romans didn't just innovate in design, they revolutionised construction materials, they developed a type of concrete called opus cementitium. It's not like modern concrete, it's better. This stuff could set underwater and actually get stronger over time. The secret ingredient? Volcanic ash. When mixed with lime and seawater, it created a chemical reaction that produced incredibly durable structures. And I mean incredibly durable. There are Roman harbours still standing today that have been battered by seawater for 2,000 years. Modern concrete starts degrading after about 50 years. It's a technology we've only recently begun to understand, let alone replicate. The Romans faced a challenge that would make any modern surveyor sweat how to maintain that precise gradient over vast distances and varied terrain. They couldn't exactly use satellite imagery or aerial surveys. Instead, they relied on instruments like the Gromer and the Dioptra. The Gromer was used for measuring right angles and straight lines, while the Dioptra was an early theodolite for measuring angles. But here's the really impressive part. They often dug tunnels through mountains, working from both ends simultaneously. Imagine starting a tunnel on one side of a mountain while another team starts on the opposite side and meeting in the middle with nothing but these basic tools to guide you. The margin for error was tiny, but they managed it time and time again. It's a level of engineering prowess that's hard to fathom even today. Maintaining the flow in these aqueducts was a constant battle against nature. The Romans had to deal with everything from sediment buildup to structural damage but they had ingenious solutions. They built in access points for cleaning and maintenance and designed the channels to be self-cleaning to some extent. The water flow was carefully regulated to prevent overflow or underfill. And then there's the siphons. When faced with a deep valley, instead of building a massive bridge, they'd sometimes use an inverted siphon. 
the water would flow down into lead pipes across the valley under high pressure and then up the other side. It's a technique that required an advanced understanding of hydraulics and materials science. The fact that they could make lead pipes that wouldn't burst under that pressure is impressive enough, let alone calculating the exact flow rates needed. The scale of the Roman aqueduct system is almost beyond comprehension. In Rome alone, 11 major aqueducts supplied the city with over 300 million gallons of water daily. That's enough to give each of Rome's 1 million inhabitants about 300 gallons per day. Far more than the average person uses today. And remember, this was all without pumps or electricity. The Romans weren't just concerned with quantity, they cared about quality too. They incorporated sophisticated purification systems into their aqueducts. Water would pass through settling tanks to remove sediment and then cascade down steps to aerate it, improving its taste and quality. It's a system that in some ways mimics modern water treatment plants. The legacy of Roman aqueducts extends far beyond the structures themselves. They laid the groundwork for modern hydraulic engineering and urban water systems. Yet there are still aspects of their technology that we haven't fully deciphered. The durability of their concrete, the precision of their surveying over vast distances, these are areas where we're still learning from the Romans. As I stand here at the Pont du Gard, I'm struck by a humbling thought. 2,000 years ago, Roman engineers solved problems we still grapple with today, and in some ways they did it better than we can. Their aqueducts weren't just functional, they were built to last millennia. It makes you wonder, what other ancient knowledge are we still yet to rediscover?